Afternoon everybody, Christian here. Today we're going to make another Rambly Saturday video. We'll talk about I don't know what. I'm just going to start talking. We'll see what we come up with. Um, I know my hair is getting kind of crazy and that's because it's getting kind of long and I can either shave it all off or I can just let it grow and I'm just going to let it grow. So that's all we're going to deal with it. Um, lots of things that are on my mind. I've been thinking a lot about Moses' situation. Um, Primarily because I'm reading through the Bible again. It's working through, obviously, Genesis, right? Um, I'm in the Exodus. Now, um, I think it's interesting that you have Moses and he's experiencing things with God that most of us have never come anywhere close to, right? And... Just, just mirac miraculous thing after miraculous thing. And yet God never heals his stutter. That's interesting. Why? I don't know. But I find it interesting. I also find it the, the way that God worded that. He says, who makes a man, uh, I'm paraphrasing, I don't remember the exact quote, but basically when Moses is telling God that He's not, he's slow at speech. That God says, who makes the blind? Who makes the dumb, you know? So a lot of people would kind of take that and say like, they, they skip over this and they, they see Jesus healing people who are blind and things like this and they run along and tell everybody, you're all gonna be healed by, you know, Holy Spirit today. Just come up front and we'll, I'll lay hands on you and you'll all be healed. But that's not, that's not sound biblically. Um, and I'm not saying that if you're, you're waiting on God for a healing like that, that you won't receive that. I'm not, not saying that at all. I'm saying that you need to be following the leading of the Holy Spirit. God is the one who makes the decision who's going to be where, who's going to look like what, and what strengths and weaknesses you may have. Um, I just found an interesting, just kind of a side note. I've actually spent a little bit of time today seeing what happened to Moses' kids, you know. And I found that interesting little side note running through and doing Google searches trying to find information that I couldn't find anywhere else. Um, someone pointed out how it might be interpreted the way that Moses was told by God, all right, go up on this mount, look out at the land, then you're going to die. And he asked God for leadership to take his place so that the people wouldn't be, you know, lost sheep, so to speak. And they point out that maybe this was him kind of trying to line his kids up next under him to follow, you know. But in fact, God didn't choose his kids. In fact, they, he, God had chosen Joshua to, to lead afterwards and you know they were discussing what that might mean and things like that and they were just kind of telling the story but I thought it was interesting because these are things that cross my mind too you know you have kids or, or you don't maybe you'll have kids in the future maybe you won't um, I have kids and you know, you want the best for all your kids, but you don't know what God knows. You don't, you don't see what God sees. And you don't know what they're called to. You don't even know that they will live out the rest of the day. I mean, much less, you know, far after you're gone. I just think it's interesting that there seems to be this false teaching in the church I might have started in a good place, but it seems to come to a place where you're God. So because the Holy Spirit's in you and uh, you're saved and you're walking with God, now you can just speak whatever and, and God will do it. You know, you can proclaim things and, and God will do it. I don't find that biblically sound. I, I can see the points where people will point to and say, well, this happened here and this happened here and, and God did what they said. Yeah, I see those points. But I see other points, too, where God didn't do that model. In fact, it says, let your requests be made known. 
doesn't say make your demands known to God and he will, you know, pop them right out for you. So, I just, I just, I see some error in the church that comes down to ultimately somebody grabs something and said, hey, this will be hot. It'll make a lot of money. And lots of people will like this, hear this. And so I'll just tell them they're all going to get healed. I'll just tell them that they're all going to be able to proclaim whatever they want. I'll just tell them they're going to be, and it's all garbage and it leads to nothing except for a bad name. Your name rots, basically, as Christian, as a society, right? Christians are sort of viewed like idiots and, and fools and things that they weren't actually intended to be. Remember, the spirit of truth dwells in you. How valuable should you be in your society? Extremely valuable. How valuable are we? Not where we should be. I look at people like Daniel and see how the people kept going to Daniel. Like, it didn't matter that they weren't followers of his God. When stuff hit the fan, they're like, hey, wait a minute, I know a guy. And, and this guy, the spirit of truth is in him. He can give us you know, answers to riddles that no one else can. And then they would go and they'd search out those types of people, right? We don't see a lot of that in today's society because Christians have, by and large, been misled. Um, not in every church, of course. Not every pastor is guilty of this, but you, you can have good intentions. And go to a church every single Sunday. And you're just like, man, I'm doing exactly what God told me to do. I am not missing a beat. And you could be sitting under someone who's telling you something that's not true. And the person telling you that thing is not true, they don't know it's not true. They think it is true. That's the blind leading the blind, right? So, it's really important that we study to show ourselves approved, which is what God told us to do. And he, in that same area where he's telling us to do that. If you read through the scriptures, you'll see that there are many times when God told the people, this is how I want you to behave. This is what I want you to do. This study to show yourself approved. Look at Joshua. Um, he said, you, you can't have good success, right? Until you master this, this knowledge, basically. Um, I don't remember the exact chapter and verse. For those of you who don't know, I don't know very many chapter and verse. I know lots of scripture, but usually it's just a por portion of the scripture that I remember, and then I just go Google it and, and find the rest of it. Uh, I, I might be able to come up with three to five verses that I could actually quote chapter and verse for. The rest of it, I, I, I can't do it. And it didn't help that I studied it in multiple different translations because then you, you get in your mind mixed up, well, did it say this or this? Or it probably said both. It's just you remember them from different translations. But it did help to give you deeper understanding of the, the scripture. Anyway, I got on the side. Where was I? Um, let me think about it. So, it seems to me that there's this misstep that I took in my maturing growing process that cost me a lot of time and I thought I'd tell you guys about it a little bit when I was in the world acted like a person from the world uh, I was an absolute heathen right and then I get saved and I immediately went okay boom I want to go as extreme um Christian, faithful as I can. And so I started to, to read Genesis through, right? And as you're doing that, you, of course, run across the, the reading of the law and, and you start to apply these principles to your life because that's what I thought I was supposed to do, right? And then you read later on, you're like, well, wait a minute, maybe I don't have to do these things. And so you go through this, this process of going from legalistic into extreme hyper grace kind of a, a lifestyle and 
I think they're both wrong. And I've mentioned that multiple times, different ways you can see that. If, if, if you're over here in legalism, you're not growing, you're not maturing. Knowing depth of legalistic principles and concepts is not growing in God. Um, walking out your faith, that's where you're going to grow. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost you something and, and you're going you're gonna to stumble and fall along the way and God's going to help you up and give you deeper understanding and things. And that's where you're actually going to grow and mature. Um, then there's this other place where you, you get to church and, and you don't know that yet. You don't know to follow God because you, you don't really know if you're hearing him or you don't. You haven't heard him yet. It says, it's impossible to please God without faith. We must believe that he is. That's about as far as most Christians go. But it's not the end of the verse. It says, we must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That diligently seeking him part, I think the church misses a lot. So they go to church and they consistently listen to pastor so-and-so but they, they're not seeking God. They're just following a pattern, a model that's been presented to them, and that's it. So if you were to have Sunday school or, or church service, ask everybody in the auditorium, uh, in, in, in the congregation, please stand up if you love Jesus. Um, almost everybody will stand up, right? Now tell them, Jesus is the word of God. And they'll say, oh, amen, brother. Okay. Now remain standing if you've read your Bible from cover to cover five times. See how many are still standing. All right? Well, or say, have read it at least five times, right? Because there'll be some who have read it more. And you want to keep them standing. The diligently seeking him part, that's where that starts to show up. People who are studying the word to show themselves approved, that person's seeking the person who gets up every single night or every morning or whatever and spends time in prayer just again and again and again. That person's diligently seeking. Um, the person who spends time uh, praising and worshiping God, you know, not because they're called to be a praise and worship leader and they're standing before the whole church and they're trying to make a big show. No, the person that goes in their, their private room, shuts the door and just praises God. I can't tell you that, I could tell you, I won't in this video, but I, there are huge benefits to pursuing God. Last week I told you guys about this incident, incident that I experienced where I had started fasting for something. And the, the, the reward that I got was, was huge. Now I have fasted in times beyond that and before that and not received that the same experience, right? But it's that diligence. You keep at it. You continue to pursue God and then he rewards you. That's the part that I think is missing in a lot of people. Uh, somebody commented uh, last week's video. They were saying, oh, I, I can get the same uh, gift that you got. And that's a true statement. That's a, that's a, they have rightly perceived something the Holy Spirit revealed to them. But it'll take what it took for me too. You'll have to you'll have to take those rocks out of the glass, you know. You'll have to um, pursue God. You'll have to diligently seek him. But if you do that, there's a guaranteed reward. Well, Christian, why do you know it's guaranteed? Because God doesn't lie, period. So um, I can't tell you what that reward's going to be, but it will you will value it. I promise you that. Um, one of the things that I messed up in my own personal life and under, I'm sure I've made lots of mistakes and there could be many different things that went into it but, but there was a lost time that I spent being alive on this planet and not following God uh, and I didn't even not believe in God I believed in God, right? I was raised to believe in God and I had no problem believing in God um that was more logical to me than it is not. But I chose to just live however I wanted to live because it suited me better, or so I thought, you know, at the moment. 
So all that time that I lost, I regret. Then I got saved and I followed the church pattern, right? I went to church and did what the church did and said what the church said and, and thought the way the church thought. But then as I would read through scripture, something would come up that would kind of like not line up with what they were saying. And so I would bring it to somebody, you know, either the pastor or, you know, somebody and point out, hey, this says this, but this is not how we're doing this. And, and they'd say, oh, no, 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 you know, don't worry about that. And it'd be just one thing after another that just didn't quite work. And then God was telling me things at the same time that I would say, hey, God's telling me these things. I'm like, no, 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 brother, that's not true. That's not, that's not God. And you're like, oh, okay, but it really feels like God's telling me these things, you know. And I seem to be hearing these things consistently. In, but I sat there in the pews letting other people tell me, no, 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 just sit there. Just, just, just do what we say. And I wasted a lot of time doing that as well. Not logically thought it through like that, but that's what I was ultimately doing. I was hearing something. I was being shown something different. And rather than be willing to go walk that out, even if it meant walking alone, I said, no, I'm going to sit here because this is what it's supposed to look like. Anyway, my huge breakthrough happened when I stopped that and said, okay, I'm going to just follow what God's telling me and walk it out. And I, I believe beyond what everybody else around me believes. And they can't walk it, but I can. So I should. So I started walking. Yeah, it gets real lonely real quick. You might get laughed at. You might get a lot of things. But the reality is that's when my actual spiritual growth happened. Uh, just really walking you out with me and him. There's a lot of things that, you know, God did in scriptures where he would call his people one by one, come up here with me, just me and you, we're going to talk about something. You're going to experience something, just me and you kind of thing. Or maybe it's just a few, you know. Um, and so don't think that you have to wait for your pastor and everybody in the church to get on board with whatever God's telling you. You need to be recognizing that God's going to hold you accountable for the things that he reveals to you. And uh, your job is to do whatever he's telling you to do. I don't care if that's in the form of a dream, an angelic visitation, a vision. Uh, you're reading through scripture and something jumps out at you and you're like, wow, I've never seen that before. God's revealing these things to you for a reason. He's giving you direction. He's, he's causing his word to shine a light on your path saying, this is how I want you to walk. This is the way I want you to walk. And you, you can waste a whole lot of time in the world and in the church. The reality is the walk is a you and him thing. You might do it with a group of people, but being in church every Sunday is not the walk. I'm just putting some pieces together for people who don't know that. Um, I'd encourage you to just grow and mature via the walk the crushing right that that part is um, difficult but necessary okay let me show you this example right now i know that i'm supposed to be looking for a breakthrough in my life and it's supposed to come about via the lottery right now i know that i'm supposed to be i'm going to come upon this soon and so I'm looking for this, right? Recently, something has happened. Something has come up in my life. Where I'm like, that's interesting because I remember that. And so I went and looked it up. The old video was titled Goliath, I think. And I looked it up and I rewatched it. And if I'm understanding what I said in that video accurately, I, mean, I don't have all the memories that I had, you know, that time ago, but... Um, in the video, I, I, I mentioned that I had this dream multiple years before. I think I said it was three years before. And the video that I was watching, I looked at the, when it was time-stamped, and it was four years old. That means that this at, that I'm experiencing right now is basically almost seven years after the fact. So let me tell you what I saw. 
Um, in this dream, there was this, uh, I was standing outside in the grass, just my yard, right? And I looked up to heaven and I saw this missile start falling from heaven. And I knew some things about this missile. Uh, I recognized the missile and that's why the name, the title of the video is Goliath. Um, and that has um, insight into it, like Goliath being the, the, the giant that'll fall, right? So anyway, I see this missile falling. And it's not like a missile like, you know, it's an attack on, you know, your country that you live in or something like that. And it's not, nothing like that. I recognize that this missile is one of these things that man has made. And they, they take it and they put this ticket inside of it and they shoot it up in, into the heaven. And then they let it fall where it may. Basically, it's the lottery, okay? And then wherever it falls, whatever person picks it up, that's, the, that's what they believe is the, the right thing to do. But I could perceive as this was falling that it caught in time. It, just, it looked like it had just caught the air and started to glide with the air. But it wasn't air, it was time that I was, I was perceiving it getting caught up in. So basically, God was showing me that this thing had been left dropped from heaven, right? A man can receive nothing and say it comes from heaven. And it entered time, and then as it was coming down toward me, I was getting excited, like, oh, cool. But then it started to get away from me, started to move away, right? And so I started to chase after it. And as it was coming down, it was going toward, right, like, my apartment complex. There's this building on the other side, and um, it was going toward that building. And then as it came close to the building, it hit the, the brick wall and dropped. And like, I was just crestfallen, you know, like, oh no, you know, this thing's, it's over kind of thing. But before it hit the ground and landed, it just caught the air again, right? But it wasn't air, it was time, right? So then it goes behind the building where I can't see it anymore. And then I see it come up over the, the roof on one end, like one corner, and then it disappears again. And whenever I see it go up, it's like my my excitement goes up, you know, and then it disappears again. I'm like, oh, man, I'm crestfallen again. And then it comes to this. Uh, so now we've gone from one corner down to the other corner over it. And then we're going, and just before we, we uh, come to the end of the, the last corner, it does this interesting thing where it does this little up and down motion. And then it crosses over the last corner of the roof, right, of the eave, and then it starts moving back toward me where I was standing in the middle of this field or grass yard. And I'm watching this thing come toward me and I, I'm thinking it's gonna fall any minute. It's not gonna get all the way to me, but no, it, it keeps going. And it gets right down there like real close to the ground, but it doesn't just stop, it just keeps going and then stops. And it stops just beyond me. And I bend over, pick it up, and I walk into my house. And that was the end of the dream. When I had the dream, I was aware of a lot of the dream. But I didn't understand the whole hitting the house and dropping and then catching the air again and all. I didn't get all that. Later, I would kind of walk it out. I would see this thing happen in my own life where, you know, I was, God would tell me this thing is coming and I would see it start and I'd be like oh and I start chasing after this thing and then it would hit a brick wall and drop and I'm like ah oh, and that's a crest falling situation and I, I lived through all of these events where uh, I thought well this is it and then it would just disappear on me you know and then it would reappear I'm like oh maybe this is it and disappear again and the thing that threw me was this little loop de not loop de loop but just the up and down kind of roller coaster motion that it does before it crosses that last eve and I'm like, what is that? What is that speaking of, you know? And the only thing I could really look at and say that reminds me of this was Santa's sleigh. It was like, you know, how you see the reindeer and, and Santa's sleigh being pulled to the to the to the in the movies, you know, kind of thing. And that's what it reminded me of. It. And I thought, it's Christmas time. Well, what's what's with it passing over the the corner? of the house. Why does it do that? Why does it make that signal? What am I supposed to glean from that concept? 
And I, I try sometimes to use different words to describe what I'm seeing, and that sometimes helps me put it together. And so for me, I, I perceived it, okay, what else would I refer to that as? It's like, what's well, the eve of the house? And it's like, okay, you've got Christmas time, you've got New Year's Eve maybe, uh, and then you've got this long run that it makes that actually um, is the fulfillment of the thing. It's, it's come full circle all the way back, right? And that's when you pick it up, right? And so I know I'm at that moment in my life where God's telling me, go, and you're going to see this come up. Um, you're, it's going to be time for you to pick up that, that ticket. I just shared with dream with you in the past, many where they're showing that exact thing. Well, now I'm sitting here and I'm watching this lottery, and then I notice, well, we're getting up there in that level again, and it's almost Christmas time. And that's when I put it together. Like, hey, remember that dream you had a long time ago? Go look it up. So sure enough, I go look it up. Now, these things are crazy things, right? These are things that your pastor's not going to talk to you about. And thing that these are, these are things that God is talking to me about. Maybe they're not uh, proper or, or religious or holy or whatever the church might think. But it's right because it's my faith with God being walked out. He said, I want you to do this thing. Now go do this thing. This is how you'll, you'll respond. This is X, Y, and Z that'll happen afterwards. All, all those things. And then I walk them out. I, I don't know any other way. And I don't, I don't want to. There's, I've done the whole walking in the world's life. It wasn't worth it. I've done the whole sitting in a pew and just listening to someone tell me things that don't really line up with what I know is true. It's not worth it. Be, being accepted by the church but putting that before God is, is not worth it. Um, I'd, rather, I'd rather be real. That, that's why I don't have, I used to have books up on my bookshelf and that I had read and everything. And I got rid of all of that stuff. Um, I don't, I try not to make these videos look appealing in any way, shape or form. I want you to listen to what I'm saying and value the truth in my words. If you can perceive the truth that I'm speaking, then this video is for you. If you can't perceive it, you're like, I disagree with you 150%. Oh, it's not for you. I'm not, I'm wasting many any time. I'm not trying to, to take anything from you. I'm not trying to trick anybody. I'm just telling you what the Holy Spirit's telling me. Some of you have ears to hear. You'll hear and you'll move on it. I don't care if you don't because you weren't supposed to. So, that's the the Christian walk that I can, if as best I can describe it to anybody who might be curious. Christian, what's it like? How do you get there where you're at or beyond? You do what I'm doing. You, you do the walk. And that's being missed in a lot of churches today. That's all I have. Just a rambling little video. God bless. Take care. See you in the next one.